Hey there, this is my cat Poppy, and this is Poppy in pixel form. In this video, we're going to be taking Pixel Poppy and animating her. We'll start by discussing animation, and then we'll go ahead and code this little walking simulator in Pygame. By the end, you'll be able to animate a player character for any game or project you're currently working on. So, what exactly is animation, and how do we animate something? In short, animation is an illusion that's created when images are flipped through really, really fast. Let's say I have this still image right here. Then, I take the image and redraw it. Except I make a slight adjustment in the legs right here. I'll go ahead and make a couple more still images until I have enough where Poppy can complete her walk cycle. If I cycle through my images really fast, like this, then it looks like Poppy's walking. According to science, if we can flip through 24 or more pictures in a second, which we'll call frames per second, then we'll perceive continuous motion with our eyes. The more frames we show in a second, the smoother the motion will look. The trade-off is that if you want more frames per second, or FPS, you're going to need more frames. Otherwise, you're going to get a really fast and hard to follow animation. So, we want to find that perfect balance. We want our animation to be smooth, not too fast, and not too slow or choppy. With that brief introduction out of the way, let's get into coding. Just as a quick side note, if you want to know how I do any of my art, I use this program right here called Asprite. I really like it because it's intuitive and really easy to use. The program does cost $20, but the source code is out there, so if you want to compile it yourself for free, you can do that. I'm not affiliated with Asprite in any way, it's just what I use and I think it's a great starting tool for beginners, especially those who wouldn't consider themselves very artistic. Setup wise, we're going to have two important files and then a couple other optional ones. Our first important file is going to be mygame.py. This is just a simple game loop that I made. And if you're not familiar with game loops, I recommend you check out my menu system tutorial as I explain the concept there. Our next important file is going to be player.py, and this is going to be where we make our player and handle their animations. Spritesheet.py is a sprite sheet class that I made in the last tutorial. If you're not sure what a sprite sheet is and want to learn how to use one, I recommend you check out the sprite sheet tutorial I did. If not, don't worry. I'll show you how to load your own images in if you have your own animations, or you can just download mine and follow along with the tutorial. The Poppy Sheet files are my sprite sheets for Poppy, so once again, if you're interested in the topic, I highly recommend you check out my tutorial on it. And the last thing is going to be this house.png file, which is just the house I drew. You can follow along with me and download it, or you can just make your own, or if you want, you can just fill the whole screen in white. It's up to you. All these files can be easily downloaded on my GitHub, which I'll link in the description. So let's go ahead and hop into our player.py file and get started. We'll go ahead and start by importing Pygame. We're also going to want to import our sprite sheet class from spritesheet.py. And if you're not using sprite sheets, then you can go ahead and skip this step. Now let's go ahead and declare a player class. All of our animations will be handled within functions inside this player class. It won't be super necessary for this project, but Pygame does have a sprite class that you can inherit from by doing pygame.sprite.bigsprite. It comes with a lot of cool features, but we won't really be using them in this tutorial. As soon as we make our class, we want to make an init function, since this is the first thing an object of our class is going to do when it's created. Since we inherited the sprite class that Pygame comes with, we can go ahead and use that init function. To keep things simple, we're going to handle controls in the player class, so we're going to want to make some flags. Left and right key will be true if the player presses left or right respectively, and then we're going to have this other flag that is facing left, and you'll see why this is important later. Now let's go ahead and load all of our images for animation. Since there's a couple steps that we need to do that, I'm going to go ahead and make a function to do it for me. So I'll call it load frames. Once I finish my function, I can go ahead and go back to the init function and call it here. So I could do self dot load frames, just like this. This will help make our code a lot cleaner and easier to read. The first thing I want to do in my load frames function is declare a sprite sheet. I need a way to access all these images in my sprite sheet and the sprite sheet class will do that for me. If you're not using sprite sheets and want to load everything in manually, you could do this. You'll do pygame.image.load and then my image name or whatever your image name is, and then you can do dot .convert. This will let you load in an image directly. So anytime I reference the sprite sheet, you'll do this instead. But I'm going to go with the sprite sheet, so let's go ahead and comment this out for now. Let's go ahead and take a look at the pictures that I'm going to be loading in. We have a couple different states Poppy's going to be in. She's either going to be walking left and right, or she's going to be standing still and bouncing up and down. We'll call her standing state the idle state, and then we'll call her walking state the walking state, and then we're going to have to pay attention to which direction she's going. You may have noticed that all my sprites only have Poppy facing left, but luckily Pygame has some features that will let us fix this, so we can also get her facing right. So let's go back to our player class so we can make some lists to hold our sprites. To start, let's go ahead and make a list which we'll call idle frames left. This will hold all the frames where Poppy is standing in place facing left. 
if we look at the metadata for our sprite sheet, you can see that I have Poppy Idle 1 and Poppy Idle 2. And these are the two frames we're going to want to put inside our list. So I'll go ahead and parse those sprites by using the parse sprite function that comes in the sprite sheet class. And then once again, if you're not using a sprite sheet, rather than putting my sprite sheet .parse sprite, you go ahead and throw this in here, pygame.image.load, and then whatever your image's name is. So we want to make sure I have both frames in here. So I'll copy paste this again and change this one to a two. That should be all the frames that we need for our standing state. So now we can go ahead and load in our walking state. I'm going to go ahead and call this list walking frames left, since this is going to have all of our walking frames when Poppy's facing left. So now we're going to do exactly what we did with the idle frames and get our images. If you're using the sprite sheet, you use my sprite sheet .parse, and if you're not, you'll load it in directly. Now, if you're following along with me, there should be eight Poppy walk frames that you need to load in. You can go ahead and copy and paste the first one and then just change the number accordingly. Now that's all the images of Poppy facing left taken care of, but we need all the images of her facing right. The way we can do that is by taking our left images and flipping them horizontally. We'll start by making an empty list and we can call it idle frames right so it corresponds with idle frames left. And now we need to iterate through our left frames and flip them so that they're facing right. We can do that using a for loop. So if we do for frame in and we call our list self.idleframes left, we can now manipulate the images that we stored right here. Since we want to add our images to the right frames list as we flip them, we can go ahead and use the append function. And then inside the append function, we're going to want to do pygame.transform.flip. The flip function takes three arguments. The first one is going to be whatever image we're trying to flip. We'll write frame, and this will let us flip whatever image is currently being iterated through. The next two arguments take a true or false, and it asks if we want to flip it in the x direction and the y direction. Since we want Poppy to go from left to right, we'll want to flip it in the x direction, but we don't want to flip it in the y direction, because that'll make her go upside down. And that's all we really need to do to flip our images. So we'll go ahead and do the exact same thing for the walking frames. We'll create our empty list, and then we'll iterate through our full list and append it as we flip our image. This function should take care of loading all of our images. So if we go back to our init, as soon as we create our player object, we'll load all of its frames. Now let's go ahead and add a few more things in our init function that we're going to need. Firstly, we're going to want a way to keep track of our player. We need to know their x coordinate, their y coordinate, their width, and their height. So we'll get one of our random frames. It doesn't really matter which one. I'm just going to use the first one from our idle frames left. And then we'll use the function dot get wrecked. What this will do is look at the image we just gave it, which in this case is one of these little poppies right here, and it'll get the width and the height for us. It'll then return a rectangle object, which will have an X, a Y, a width, and a height, which is everything we're going to need for it now. Speaking of X and Y, let's go ahead and set those two so we have a starting position for our player. If I do self.rect.midbottom, then it'll assign the mid-bottom of our image, so Poppy's legs, to whatever coordinates I feed it. In this case, I gave it the coordinates 240, 244, because that's where the grass of my little house is, but feel free to experiment with it. Next, we're gonna wanna go ahead and make two more variables. We're gonna have self.currentFrame and self.lastUpdated. I'll explain what these do later, but for now, just equal them to zero. We're also gonna make a velocity variable and equal that to zero as well. Once again, you'll see how we use it later. Last two things we're gonna need. Let's go ahead and make a state variable, which will be a string, just to keep track of what state Poppy's in. We don't expect her to be doing anything as soon as the game starts, so we'll set it to be the idle state. And the last thing we're going to need is a current image variable. This will keep track of what image we're currently on in our animation cycle, and this is also going to be the one that's put onto the screen. For now, we'll just set it to the first image of idle frames left. That should be everything that we need in our init function. Now let's go ahead and make a new function which we'll call update. This function will figure out everything that we need for our current game loop cycle, so it'll figure out Poppy's movement and which image we need to display for our animation. For the movement, we're going to keep things really simple. We're not going to worry about complex gravity or anything like that. We're going to have simple physics in the x direction only. We'll start by setting our velocity variable equal to zero. Then, if the player presses the left key, we'll set it to negative two. And if the player presses the right key, we'll set it to positive two. Then we just need to adjust the x component, which we can do by doing self.rect.x, which calls the x component of our player's rectangle class. We'll add whatever the current value of velocity is. So if it's negative 2, Poppy will move 2 pixels to the left, and if it's positive 2, Poppy will move 2 pixels to the right. These simple physics should be everything we need for our little walking simulator. Now there's two more things I need to do. I need to figure out which state Poppy's currently in, and then I need to figure out which image that should be associated with. 
Since these will be slightly more involved processes, I'm just going to go ahead and make functions for each of these. Let's go ahead and start with our self.setState function. We'll start the function by assuming that Poppy's not doing anything, and set her state to idle. We'll then check the velocity variable to see if Poppy's moving at all. If the velocity is greater than zero, then that means Poppy's moving to the right, so we'll set her self.state to moving right. If Poppy's velocity is less than zero, then we'll set her state to moving left. Now if none of these two branches run, then that means Poppy is not doing anything, and her state will just stay as idle. That should be it for our set state function. Now let's go ahead and make our animate function, which will be the real meat and potatoes of this video. Animation is dependent on time, so we need a way to keep track of the current time. We can do now is equal to pygame.getTicks, and this will give us the current amount of time in milliseconds that has passed since we first started running our game. Let's go ahead and start with Poppy's idle animation. So let's go ahead and check if her state is equal to idle. Let's go into mygame.py real quick. You can see that I have this clock object highlighted. This clock object is important because we're going to use it for this right here. The clock.tick function limits our game to 60 frames per second. Remember that our game is constantly updating and redrawing our screen. Some computers are blazing fast and others can be kind of slow. So while one computer can maybe refresh the screen a thousand times per second, Another computer might be happy if it can get 30 times a second. If we want our animation to be consistent, then we need to set a constant frame rate. So if we set our frame rate to a constant 60 frames per second, that means every second, or 1000 milliseconds, our game will update a total of 60 times. Otherwise, our animations will look really fast on really powerful computers, and really choppy on really slow computers. Knowing that our game is running at a constant 60 frames per second will also help us in our animations. That way we have a good reference to know how often we should change our animation cycle. So let me show you what I mean. Let's say for our idle state, I want to change between my two images every 200 milliseconds or one fifth of a second. To check how much time has passed in Pygame, we'll subtract our last updated variable from the current time, which is now. Remember that we have our updated variable set to zero, so this will return true when 200 milliseconds have passed. Now we don't want this branch to stay true forever. We want it only to be true every 200 milliseconds. So we'll set updated back to the current time, and this will essentially reset our timer. All right, so enough time has passed and it's time to move on in our animation cycle. We need to figure out which image we're gonna pick next. Since all of our images are stored sequentially in lists, we can just represent this with an integer number. So zero, one, two, three, four, etc. Since all of our images are in order, all we really have to do is move on to the next one. And then when we get to the end, we just need to go back to the beginning. To do that, we can use this nifty little formula right here. So we're gonna get our current frame, we're gonna increment it by one, and then we're gonna mod it by however large our image list is. If you've never seen the modulo operator or this percent sign right here, let me explain to you how it works real quick. Let's take eight divided by four, we get two. And why is that? Well, if we subtract four from eight two times, then we get zero. So four goes into eight two times perfectly. Now what if instead of eight divided by four, we did nine divided by four? Four does not go into nine perfectly. If we subtract four from nine twice, then we have one left over. So we could say the answer to nine divided by four is two remainder one. It goes in twice and then one is remaining. What the modulo operator does is return this number right here. So if you did nine mod four, then you would get one is your answer. Now this remainder has a special property. No matter how big we make this number right here, so even if we make nine a million, this remainder will actually never be bigger than four. It can only take the values zero, one, two, or three. This is insanely useful because it'll give us that looping behavior that we're looking for. So using our idle frames as an example, we have frames zero and one. Our list has a total of two frames, so the length of the list will return two. So no matter how big the value of current frame gets, it's always just gonna alternate between zero and one. Now that we have the index of what our current image should be, we just need to set our current image to the image at that index with the appropriate list. Before I move on, now would be a good time to talk about this self.facing left variable. Let's go into our mygame.py file real quick and import our player class. Let's make an instance of our player, which I'll call cat. Now let's go down to where we check our keyboard inputs and fill this in. If the player presses down on the left key, then you're gonna to wanna to set the left key variable equal to true, and I'm also gonna to wanna to set the facing left variable equal to true. Now let's do the same for the right key, except this time we're gonna set the facing left variable equal to false. The reason we need this left key variable is because we wanna keep track of which direction our character is currently facing. That way when we're in our idle state, we know whether to use the left frames or the right frames. 
And then just to finish up these inputs, we'll set these equal to false. So if the player releases the key, then the key flag should no longer be true. Now that we have these, we can know which direction our player is facing. So if the player is facing left, we'll load whatever image is next in our animation cycle from the left images list. And we'll do the same for the right. So that should be it for the idle state. Now let's just handle the moving states. Nothing new is really going to happen here. We're going to do the same thing that we did for our idle state. So we're going to check to see how long it's been since we last updated our image. The only real difference here is that rather than checking every 200 milliseconds, we're going to be checking every 100 milliseconds. And the reason we're doing that is because we have more moving frames than we have idle frames. Whenever you're animating anything in Pygame, you really just have to play around with this number and see what looks best. Now we're going to do the same thing we did before and calculate what current frame we're supposed to be on. Except this time we're going to use the length of our walking frames. Now all we have to do is check whether we're going to use the left or the right frames. And to do that, we can just check our state. If the player is moving left, then we'll set the current image from the left frames list. And if the player is moving right, we'll set the current image from the right frames list. That should be everything we need to animate Poppy. So let's just go ahead and do one more function, and all it's going to do is draw Poppy onto the screen. So we're going to call it draw. Now usually you'd have a game object, so you could reference the screen that Poppy needs to be drawn on. But since we're keeping things simple, I'm just going to pass in that screen as an argument. If you want to see how to use the game object, I recommend you check out my menu system tutorial as I show you how you can set up your game to be more efficient. Now let's go ahead and take that display and blit whatever current image we have for our player. And then we'll also pass in self.rect. What Pygame will do is take the x and y coordinates from our rectangle object and display our image there. So that should be it for our player class. Now let's hop back into mygame.py and just make some last minute adjustments. After we get our player input, we're going to want to go ahead and call the update function so we can do cat.update. Once the update function takes care of our movement in animation, all we have to do is draw. So we'll call cat.draw. It's important to make sure we draw our player after whatever background we have. In my case, this is my background, it's the house. But if you don't want to use the house, you can do canvas.fill and this will fill it with whatever color you want. Remember that the draw function needed something to draw on. So we'll just pass in our canvas and now we should be good to go. All right, so let's go ahead and run our game and see what we get. And we get this window right here. I'll go ahead and zoom in so you can see it. So here we have our little game. And while we're now moving, Poppy's doing a little up and down bop. If I press the arrow keys, then we see Poppy do her little walk. And if I let go, Poppy stays in the right direction. There we go. And that'll be the end of this tutorial. I hope you were able to learn something. If we think about it, games are just interactive animations. So knowing how to animate can really help bring your game to life. If you got lost anywhere along the way, I post all my code on my GitHub, so you can look at it there and follow along at your own pace. If you enjoyed this tutorial, consider subscribing and sticking around for more content. If there's anything you'd like to see me cover, feel free to post it in the comments, and I'll see what I can do. Take care, and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.